Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak with you why we created the first ever uh, osteopathy trade union and what benefit it has for manual osteopaths. But before that, uh, before I get into that, I want to mention that I am grateful to God for giving me the ability to live in Panama now. As you know, I live in Panama. I love Bougainvillea. It's uh, my number one most favorite uh, plant in the world. I love these flowers and um, it was my dream for years to live in a location where Bougainvillea can grow naturally outside. Unfortunately in Canada that I live for 32 years, uh, Bougainvillea doesn't grow naturally outside. It's too cold for them. I love Bougainvillea. They're very tough. They don't need much water, they grow under the sun, without sun, and uh, they, uh, they grow in any condition, nothing can touch them, uh, they, they rarely get infected, but the, most, uh, the best thing I love about them, they create beauty all the time, they give flower, flowers all year round, they are not scared of competition, you can put other bougainvillea mixed with them, other plants, they grow it's still very good, they give tons of flowers. They kind of remind me of myself. <laughs> I am like that. I am not scared of competition. I'm tough in business and I give all the time to my students. I, year round I try to create benefit in what I do and creating this union is uh, actually is the same thing as well which I explain now. But before that uh, a trade union is an organization made of uh, people in the same occupation that work toward the same goal, basically protecting their rights to make sure usually employers uh, don't abuse them and employ employers give them uh, what they deserve, uh, the, uh, that their rights to a good, safe envi uh, working environment is protected and their right to uh, have a decent uh, decent uh, salary is protected. But obviously uh, manual osteopaths, they are self-employed, most of them. Rarely you find one that works for somebody else as an employee or as an independent contractor. Uh, so uh, that is why usually uh, the profession of manual osteopathy uh, has never been unionized. It's no point because they work for themselves. I changed that. I created the first ever osteopathy trade union in history in 140 years. It is called Canadian Union of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners and I created it for a few different reasons. First and foremost, it, it was used by me to clean up the profession, to pro protect the profession of manual osteopathy. When I founded the National Academy of Osteopathy over 10 years ago, which now it, it has become the largest provider of manual osteopathic education in the world, along with the, my two universities in Spain and the U.S., um, at that time, the osteopathy profession was going through a bad time. There were bad people in the profession, the, that abuse manual osteopathy because uh, manual osteopathy is not regulated in Canada. So uh, they were, uh, I give you some example. There was one guy in Burlington, Ontario. He said for three months he comes inside your home to teach you manual osteopathy, to make you manual osteopath. He charged $450 for that. Another association, you pay $45 and they issue uh, a certificate in manual osteopathy to you so uh, to make you manual osteopath another association uh, uh, you pay him uh, pay them two thousand five hundred dollars and they they issue the title of DOMP that we stopped that a long time ago uh, but they had over hundred members the so-called manual osteopaths there were a few cases like that, uh, unaccredited schools, schools that did not exist. There was one school in Markham, was a clinic of somebody, there was no school at all. No teacher, no school. You pay that uh, 
uh, owner some money and she would issue a diploma in manual osteopathy. There were a bunch of them like that. I, as a school owner, could not go against them because it gave the impression that I don't want competition and I am going against my competition. But the union is a different story. Union can go against anybody who jeopardizes the, uh, the business of its members. So this union go against these individuals, closed most of them, the, and uh, you don't find them anymore in Ontario and across Canada. And that is one reason I created it. It gave me a club, a tool, something to go against those uh, those fraudsters, those con artists who were taking advantage of poor people who wanted to become manual osteopaths and uh, they, they went through those routes and uh, this we stopped it. This was a way to protect the people of uh, Ontario and this uh, was appreciated by government as well. Uh, Dr. Reza Moridi, then Minister of Ontario Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities issued an award to National Academy of Osteopathy and thanking uh, us for providing an excellent education in osteopathy and for protecting uh, the health of society in Ontario. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what we do while everybody else focuses on just teaching osteopathy. I and my team, we always work on protecting the profession, protect, protecting our, our alumni, protecting our students, and elevate the profession. This is the, one of the difference between us and others, and this is one reason why we have become the leader in manual osteopathic education in the world, we, because of all these things that we do for the profession. Additionally, all trade unions, they have staff. They need money to do their job, to protect their members. So what they do, they get a percentage of the income of their members, something like, uh, depending on union, between 1 to 3 percent of their paycheck as their union dues. We don't do that. Our members pay zero. Medical Sciences in Spain and National University of Medical Sciences in Naples, Florida, U.S., which is the first and only school of Manuel Osterberg in the staff, everybody be my students, so we have one united front because I did many things with um, other unions, with government through this union, and I wanted to have a united one voice when I approached the un other unions, when I approached the government. I didn't want in fighting one guy from this college tell me, oh, you can't do this and this. I didn't want that, so that is why I run myself. And I'm very popular, so <laughs> I got the, the most votes. Other people ran too, but I, I was elected as a president and I was able to uh, bring all these changes to the, to the manual authority profession. Uh, nobody else does anything for the profession, and I'm shocked by this. In, in manual authority in Canada and elsewhere, most of the things that uh, you see has been done is because of National Academy of Osteopathy, myself and my team. We work hard to elevate the profession. So protecting the profession was one of the main reasons we provided, we created uh, this union. The second reason why I created this union, this uh, trade union for osteopathic manual practitioners, is that we wanted to generate increased income for our alumni. Union workers across Canada, they all have extended health benefit insurance that covers for their services. And a lot of them, they do physical work, not all of them, like teachers and others, they are union workers too. There are many union workers from police officers, firefighters, teachers, nurses, and so on. And I wanted these people to be introduced to osteopathy. As you know, osteopathy does amazing things for chronic pain management. And I want everybody to have access to this beautiful, wonderful, miraculous healthcare. And the union is one way to do so. 
as unions, they, they are a group, uh, they form a brotherhood and sisterhood. They work together. They support each other and they use each other's services and benefits. So by forming the Canadian Union of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners, I was able to approach other unions and let them know about who we are, what manual osteopathy is, and what benefits we can provide to the uh, members, to union members, to union employees. This, in turn, increased, uh, increased uh, the usage of manual osteopathy and uh, the whole profession benefited, but also it helped our alumni because we asked these unions to send their members to our clinic, osteopathic chronic pain clinics of Canada, which now we have, which I founded three years ago from one clinic in Toronto. Now we have 329 clinics in 30 countries. We, we ask union members to make appointment to OCPCC if they need manual osteopathic care. So this is a way for us to generate more income for our own students, alumni, and manual osteopaths. I constantly think about how to improve the lives of my students, how to make the, them make more money, and how to provide better services for them. And this is one thing we do. No other school of osteopathy or any other profession does that for their own alumni. They have no team sitting down and thinking how to increase income of those who graduate from their school. Nobody does that. But I understood a long time ago, to get, if I want to get something, I have to give something back. And uh, by providing a good service, by providing, uh, by ensuring my students become wealthy and rich and successful, they will attract others to study osteopathy. I would benefit, the profession benefits, more patients will have access to manual osteopathic care because there will be more manual osteopaths around the world. My goal in life is to ensure every town with a population of 100,000 people have at least one manual osteopath, hopefully one of my students, working there because it does amazing for chronic pain. And everybody, no matter where they are, they have, they deserve to have access to good chronic pain management. They deserve that. In I am now in Key West, uh, Florida. Uh, I was in Naples, but came here for a few days of uh, rest and relaxation. And there were more than 300 million people in the U.S. And over 100 years, they had no access to manual osteopathic care. I brought the profession of manual osteopathy to this country you know nobody is thinking about the profession everybody they just open a college and teach a few techniques and graduate manual osteopaths without really thinking about how to expand the profession i sat down and i thought u.s doesn't have it for well, how should i do this and i found that uh, you know by uh, having a university in naples florida i can provide this i can pro uh, introduce the uh, uh, people to this profession and people will benefit from that this is how progress will happen, by shocking the system, by offering new things, uh, the whole thing uh, will go up. And I love the osteopathy. It, I live, breathe osteopathy. And, the, and the, it, is, it is just amazing and I want everybody to have access to this beautiful profession. So, the two main benefits, protecting the uh, the manual osteopathy profession from fraudsters and con artists. Second, creating more income for alumni. And the third benefit was that the union gives me an opportunity in a way to get inside the government and to negotiate with them and to introduce the profession to them and to make sure uh, they, uh, they pass laws applicable to manual osteopathy, beneficial to manual osteopathy. As a school owner, I don't have much power when dealing with the politicians. They don't respond that well. They're nice, but don't respond that well. But union presidents, 
they have a lot of clout and power with the government. Governments take unions very seriously because it's not just one union. The whole unions act together. So if somebody go against one union, other unions can come to their, their defense. It's something that uh, works for the whole profession. Uh, it's a brotherhood, it's a sisterhood, and uh, they have solid solidarity together. I, during May, the workers' days, uh, we always go in demonstrations and uh, uh, side by side with the union workers uh, to celebrate the, uh, the uh, workers' day, uh, to the labor day, and all that, uh, that to to show our solidarity with the union workers. Uh, and they, in turn, uh, do that as well. Having a union is a powerful way to protect the pro profession. It's a great way on the side to also increase the income for alumni. Uh, but that is a secondary benefit. But the main benefit that I really was looking for uh, was uh, to protect the patient, to have something to go to go against those who who do uh, you cannot go legally or uh, or is you know not common as a school I cannot go against uh, some people there were a few bad people in, uh, in Canada practicing manual osteopathy who were not qualified who never uh, studied manual osteopathy who got faked diplomas and this union one by one went against them. If I as a, uh, a school owner would go against them, they would question who are you to do so. But the union was able to do so. Nobody jokes with the union. Union can send 10 people in front of the, the clinics and they demonstrate and ask that clinic to be closed, ask people not to go to that clinic for services. They have the legal right to do so. I cannot go there with my students uh, and uh, demonstrate in front of the clinics, but the union can do. We never had to go that far to close down these people. Thank God a letter from the union sufficed in getting these people to stop calling themselves manual osteopaths, to stop practicing manual osteopathy because they understood they are on the radar of this union they understood that by practicing manual osteopathy they are damaging our members our members are good manual osteopaths and if a patient goes to them and get damaged or injured all manual osteopaths will suffer because government would think all manual osteopaths are bad and they know that too these fraudsters, these criminals, these con artists, they work as long as they are in hiding, as long as they are not on the radar of uh, others who do honest work. But once they are on the radar, they usually pack and leave. And this is what happened. Ten years ago, you would have seen websites of so many of these fraudsters. Now there is known. Now we have so many students in Canada over... Half of the uh, manual osteopaths in English-speaking Canadian provinces are my students, and they hear. They always check websites, internet, and if they they see a person looks suspicious, we will the union will do investigation to see where this person graduate. Is his the title diploma valid? Uh, they would contact the schools. We know all the schools. And we know what the school is fake. If somebody says I'm from ABCD, uh, a school of osteopathy uh, in Pakistan or in uh, Malaysia or this and that, we know there is no such a school because we know all the schools that exist. There was a case like that. Uh, one, uh, one person said he is from this school in Pakistan and was practicing. And he even had transcript with this college and everything but when we we knew there is no school because we knew uh, there is no school of osteopathy in Pakistan the address was faked we have alumni in Pakistan so they went the address was faked there was no uh, phone number and the website was a fake one there was no business uh, like that so uh, the union uh, reported this case to police and that and that gentleman stopped 
practicing and uh, never worked as a manual osteopath in Canada. This, this is how 10 years ago barely any insurance companies covered our uh, manual osteopaths. Uh, they didn't, uh, if just a few of them covered our uh, alumni. Now most insurance companies cover uh, our alumni who provide manual osteopathic care for their osteopathic services. Why do you think is that? Because the profession has been cleansed. We cleaned the profession. Ask any of the other osteopathic colleges what they did to clean the profession. Nothing. We were the one who do that through this union. We, we worked at it. We spent money on the staff to do so. This is how we do, this is how the profession elevates. Now, manual osteopaths across Canada have access to uh, insurance coverage, usually up to $100 per hour uh, to $500 per year limit because of the profession has been cleansed. These are so important. And this union is a tool that can be used to get the things that you cannot usually get across Canada. This is how, why it is important. Sometimes you need a power tool, something to dictate to you what, uh, to others, what they can and cannot do. Be, uh, if it's something that can uh, endanger the public, endanger the profession, and all the politicians are on our side because we protect the public against these fraudsters. Who can argue against that? Which politician can come tell you this union is not good because it's helping the people? So these are the things that would protect the public. These are the things that would elevate the profession. And the union is very important, even though it's not traditionally the union like other unions that get union dues and work, uh, work for their workers and they do uh, employment contract negotiations with employers. We don't do that obviously because maybe less than 1% of manual osteopaths are employed by others. 99% they have their own clinic so they don't need our services for negotiation. However, if those who are employees and uh, they get abused but somehow by their employers, they always can contact uh, our union, the Canadian Union of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners, and the union would contact the employer and try to sort out the problem. But we never had even one case of that. Usually, manual osteopaths are employer, employed by health professionals, and they are usually professional, nice people, and they don't try to abuse the employees. So this is the reason uh, why we created, and uh, it's a unique way, is is an, an innovative way to 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 help the profession. That's what I always do. I am like this bougainvillea. Mwah. I love them. Mwah. They can be used for paint. They can use uh, used to be for uh, as herb, uh, for some medicinal values. They can be used for everything. They are unique and innovative. Put them anywhere and they grow. And this is how you should be as well. Don't just do normal things. Find a unique, innovative way to get what you want. This is what I do all day. I sit down and I think about how to improve things. When you improve things, everybody is happy. And I'm grateful to God for making me who I am, for giving me this ability to uh, help the profession, to help my students, to help my country. I love Canada, I love Panama, I love United States of America, the land of, uh, the, land of the free. Uh, these are amazing countries and I give back to my students by m paying more tax, uh, by helping their country and by creating jobs I, in my own way I, I do my share of things for for the people and uh, but may, my main concern is my students and the profession and the patients I want everybody have to have access to this beautiful wonderful healthcare and I want to ensure my students continue to have a wealthy career to become rich and successful so they can help more people that's it for today. Uh, 
Have a nice day. I'm in Key West again with this